Here's a very interesting GI question. You have this entire data set with a bar chart and all of this text that describes what we have. Now, this particular data set has two different versions in the official mocks. You have two questions that are based on just this data set. I'll first quickly show you those versions. Here they are. So the difference is only in the question stem. The data set is, is exactly identical, as I said, version one and version two. Most of it, when you see it at a glance, it's hard to even tell what the difference is, but there is there are some differences. For example, it says at least four degree Fahrenheit greater than seasonal, while here it says more than 4 degree Fahrenheit, less than seasonal. They've even used the same numbers, 4 and 8 here, 4 and 8 here. So it's just word play. And we'll see both of these versions one by one. But we'll start with the first one. We'll understand the data set, solve the first version, then look at the second one as well. Okay, so let's just start with the first one. In a given city, the graph represents the daily deviation in degrees Fahrenheit of the high temperature from the expected high temperature, which means we have an actual high temperature and we have what was expected. And the difference between these two is the deviation. That is what is plotted in the graph here. Data is grouped into disjoint classes, no overlaps of deviations. Then it explains how that grouping has been done for each value of T marked on the horizontal axis. So there are many values marked here, negative 16, through 16 and I'll just take one example let me just take 0 so if I think about the interval the value of 0 marked here what does it say for each value of t marked the class centered at t so the class centered at 0 includes all observed deviations greater than or equal to t minus 2 but less than t plus 2 which means for zero's case i'm talking about 0 minus 2 and 0 plus 2 so this class will include all of the deviations that are greater than equal to negative 2 but strictly less than 2 that actually tells me that all of these intervals have a width of 4 it's always 2 less and 2 more than the value which you see on the x-axis Okay, this is first how to read the, the graph. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Then further, a given day's high temperature is x degrees Fahrenheit less than seasonal. So this is some definition, what this thing means, we'll have to see. x degrees, I'm just going to keep it very symbolic, x degrees less than seasonal, if, then it tells you when you will call it like that. If it is x degrees Fahrenheit less than the left end point of the class centered at zero, too many words. It is simply talking about left end point of class centered. We just saw that in our example. This is negative two. So if it is x degree Fahrenheit less than negative two. So that means negative two minus x. Simply, you can take an example. Just uh, consider your temperature to be, say, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Then negative 10 can be written as negative two minus 8 and you see this is where the x matches the 8 which means you can say that negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit is 8 degrees Fahrenheit less than seasonal. This is the definition. Then let's read further. It is giving you another side of the definition. A temperature is x degree Fahrenheit greater than seasonal if. So this time we have greater than seasonal and again you have your conditions. If it is x degrees Fahrenheit greater than the right end point of the class centered at zero, which is two. So we are saying if it is x more than two, if it is two plus x, that's it. This is your second definition. This is important translation, understanding what is being said. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, 
throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now, finally, let's read what the question is asking. For a randomly selected day in this 100 day period, probability that the high temperature was at least 4 degrees Fahrenheit greater than seasonal is dash. Let's think about this part. So we're talking about the second definition only, the greater than seasonal part. A temperature was at least 4 degrees Fahrenheit greater than seasonal. Now, if X is at least 4, that is the value we have, it means this is greater than or equal to 4, then this 2 plus X thing will be greater than or equal to 6, which means you are talking about all of the temperatures which are greater than or equal to 6 degrees Fahrenheit. All of them will be at least 4 more than 2, which is the definition that we had. Now, if you try to read it here, greater than or equal to 6 on the graph means all of those here on the right of this green line. We have 15 deviations plus 3, which means it's a total of 18 deviations out of 100 because it's 100 days. So 18 out of 100 gives us a probability of 0.18. Then let's read the second part, which is the probability that high temperature was at least 8 degrees Fahrenheit greater than seasonal. So this is simple. you are just changing the value from 4 to 8. So this will change to greater than or equal to 10. So we will read how many days have this deviation. Now greater than or equal to 10 means everything on the right of the purple line. And it's just these three days. So three out of 100 gives you a probability of 0 0.03. That's it. Now let's also look at the second version. So I have all of the same data set and this is the new version. Let's just first read this. For a randomly selected day, 100 day period, probability that the high temperature was more than four degree Fahrenheit, less than seasonal. So this time my question is about the less than seasonal case. So I'll take this first line. Now, how much less am I saying? More than four degree Fahrenheit less, which means this X that I was talking about, this is more than four. And now you see, you know where this X was sitting here, right? It's negative two minus X. So when I am subtracting four from negative two, then I get negative six. But since I'm subtracting something more than four, that means the result I will get will be even more negative. That means I will get something less than negative six. So essentially, I will go on the chart and find out all of the days that have this as the uh, high temperature deviation. So let's just see where it's less than negative six. You will see this is your negative six line on the chart. So less than that means everything on the left of this. How many do you have? Two and 12. That's 14 days in total which means there are 14 days out of 100 for which this is happening. And so the probability for this is 0.14. Similarly, when you read the second part, it says, and the probability that it was more than 8 degree Fahrenheit, less than seasonal. So again, I'm talking about less than seasonal, but this time I am saying I want this to be more than 8 instead of more than 4. So this is going to be, again, when I do negative 2 minus 8, that gives me negative 10. But because I'm subtracting even more than that, my result will be even smaller than negative 10. So I have to, again, come back here and see how many are less than negative 10. This is the negative 10 mark, the blue line. And how many do I have less than that? Well, just this 2. And so on is going to give me 0 0.02 as the probability. Let's fill that in and we're done. Let's nicely summarize this now. The question text was pretty involved. There was so much we had to understand here. We took examples to make sense of the information here. Without it, it would all feel just like too much information. We don't know what this T, T minus two, T plus two is because you don't see any T here on the graph. The example was just to tell you how to read any class here on this chart. Once we got that example, then we got two more definitions, which were also very important that we translate carefully. This is where we came up with these two definitions here. What is less than seasonal x degree Fahrenheit less and what is x degree Fahrenheit more. We also took examples to completely understand this because the language was not the easiest to understand. After that, once we were very clear about what is given, we understood very nicely how to read this, we went into our question. While version one that we solved was about the greater than seasonal case that we solved, version two that we just saw was about the less than seasonal case. Essentially then in the two versions, you just used these two definitions one by one. This is the one that I've used now in version two. Well, this first one is the one we used in version one. Exactly the same kind of working though, exactly the same starting of owning the data set without which the question would have been a mess.